Hey guys, it's Jamie. And I'm Amanda. And we're with Sioux Land Libraries. And today, we're going behind the scenes at the Irene Hall Museum Resource Center. I can't wait to check everything out. Let's go do it. Let's do it. So Jesse, what room are we in right now and like what do you have in here? This is the archive room and archives are anything that's paper products or pictures or oh. your newspapers, maps, all of these different materials that we do for archival research, kind of like at the library. So Very cool. So a lot of archives at the library. Yeah. In front of us here, I do have one of our scrapbooks and okay. a few pictures. So when people donate items to us, a lot of times they give us donations of what they've done in their life. And mm -hmm. this gentleman is Mickey Morgan, and he was known as the Batman. Um, <laughs> he made himself a gliding uh, suit that you mean, he, like, so he could fly? So he could fly. Oh, that's awesome. And we do have some images here, some pictures. This is him in his outfit that he made, and he would jump out of planes and glide through the air, and then he would have a parachute to help him with landing. That so is so cool. He traveled all over the United States, um, a lot of air shows during the 1930s, and so he kind of cataloged all that with the newspaper articles, and when he donated um, not only the scrapbook and a lot of images, he actually donated the suit to us, and we'll get to see that in our textile room here in a moment. That is awesome. Yeah. So this is just a really cool example of things that you can learn about here. Correct. Oh, very cool. How would you, if I wanted to come learn about the Batman, yes. how would I go about doing that? You would give us a call, and then we would set up an appointment, get out all of the items that you were looking for, and sit down with you on how to research those effectively, and then uh, just let you kind of look through and, and learn. Very so, cool. So um, those scheduled times are really what's best so that you can spend as much time as you need instead of just walking in. Um, as you can see, our archives room spans quite a lot. <laughs> yeah. And um, even with uh, 50,000 pictures even, and wow. some scrapbooks, those are all items that are things we can't just grab right away for you. It might yeah. take us a minute to kind of collect everything from our different areas. Awesome. Well, thank you so much yeah. for all this information. I can't wait. You said you have the bat suit? We do have the bat suit. So we're going to move Can to we the go archives check it out? and check it out. Yeah. Yes, thank you. <laughs> all right, so we're in a, another room here. What do we have in this space? Uh, this is our textile room. So everything from underwear to overcoats and in between, of course. <laughs> All right. So this is, again, donated stuff from Correct. years ago. Yes. And okay. some of it is was collected um, in the 1930s, 1940s, even up to recent. We have a lot of items that can outfit a man, woman, or child um, okay. prior to 1900, which is really nice because a lot of our exhibits focus a lot on that early part of Sioux Falls. Sure. We've had a lot of World War I uniforms donate, donated to the museum, um, some World War II, a few Vietnam veterans. Um, we even have some Boy Scout and Girl Scout uniforms, so it's kind of neat to have the smattering. Yeah, um, and then we also cool. have the accessories to go with it, so hats, shoes, uh, gloves, and anything else that you might need to finish that ensemble. <laughs> yeah, I had no idea all that stuff was here. So obviously then you can pull from this for like museum exhibits at like the old courthouse and exactly, stuff? Exactly, right. So everything that is in this building is items that could go out on exhibit at the old courthouse museum or the Pettigrew Home and Museum. So occasionally we'll put out clothing in the different rooms in the Pettigrew Home just kind of make it look lived in and what the styles were of that time period. That's really cool. Um, so obviously we've got like the bat suit here that we were talking right. about before. So we saw some pictures of Mickey Morgan in his bat suit, and we do have his helmet and the wings also to go along with it. So uh, when these items came in, um, the reason why we got them is he was very centralized around Sioux Falls. So um, a lot of the pictures that we have are from the Sioux Falls area and the Sioux Falls airport. We figured that he thought this was the best place for his artifacts to come. And it is. Uh, being local history, we try to focus just on that. That's our mission is to showcase the Minnehaha County and Sioux Falls history to anybody who comes in the door. What I'm thinking is this is the original Batman. That yes. The OG Batman is from South Dakota? Yeah. All so right. it would be kind of neat. Um, this was, he was 
doing these shows in the 1930s, uh, so 1936, 37 is what we have a lot of the newspaper clippings and pictures from. So yeah. Well, I can't wait to see what's in the next room. Great. Okay, so we're in a much bigger space now, and it looks like there's, I mean, all sorts of things to taxidermy to vehicles in the back. What, I mean, what do we all have in here? This is our 3D room, so three-dimensional items. So unlike our archives and textiles that are housed in a lot of boxes, these items, um, we're able to put them out on shelves, and some things just don't fit in a box, like a horse-drawn carriage sure. or a two-wheeled <laughs> cart. Um, <laughs> we have a lot of animals um, that were collected over the years of the museum. The bird collection is actually from the... Senator's house. Um, Richard F. Pattergrew had um, given the, his house a museum to the people of Sioux Falls, and in 1930, the first curator was Mary Peabody, and she loved birds. Her brother studied birds and would collect a lot of these specimens and bring them here. So we have a lot of them. Yeah. Um, so not always collected in Sioux Falls, but again, that connection of his sister running the museum, they were in the Pettigrew Museum for so long, and people remember that. When they come through, they remember the bird room. They remember the teepee that was inside the Pettigrew. So so that type of stuff is yeah. what's stored in this room. We also have things like your washer and dryers and your, you know, sewing machines and anything to outfit a house from the late 1800s, the 1920s, and some in between and some also the 1960s and 70s. So um, yeah. we definitely have the kitchen sink in a few, <laughs> in a few places. Um, behind us too, we have a lot of toys. Uh, we just recently took down a toy exhibit at the old courthouse museum, which yeah. was a lot of fun. Seeing able, being able to see the early toys of Great great grandma's era to mom and dad's um, eras was just a fun thing to have people come in and talk about and reminisce. And some of our staff did help collect a few of those items yeah. from their personal collection. I saw that <laughs> exhibit and I was like, okay, yeah, we'll very that. familiar. <laughs> yeah. um, how about these bones behind us? Also, yeah, we have some bones. We actually have a couple mammoth bones that were excavated out of the Sioux Falls airport. Wow. And um, people think, well, dinosaurs out in the Black Hills. There wasn't anything on this side. Um, there was remnants of mammoths and larger mammals here on this side of the state and petrified bones have shown us that it was pretty active on this side of the state. So um, finding a mammoth bone this close to home was really fun find apparently yeah. for them. So it's now in our museum. So you've got another room that you're gonna show us, right? Yes, we're gonna go to the ethnographic collection next. All right, let's check it out. Yeah. So Jesse, this is maybe the last room that you're bringing us into, and this looks like it's some real special collections. Can you tell us about what's in here? This room is designated as our ethnographic collection. Okay. And ethnographic is cultural items. Um, so not just from people that lived here in Sioux Falls, but from all around the world. And much of our collection, it was actually collected by Mr. Pettigrew. Okay. Um, he was a worldwide traveler and brought a lot of the stuff back to showcase in his museum of the late 1920s. And when he passed away in 1930, he gave the city his museum. Well, in the 1970s is when the Siouxland Heritage Museums came about in 1974. And so we combined everything from the Pettigrew Museum to what was getting collected at the old courthouse museum and that's how the collections really became about but a lot of these cultural items that aren't from Sioux Falls their provenance and their story is through Mr. Pettigrew okay. he collected it he was South Dakota's first senator his history brought this history now into our museum and into the county so that's how the connection kind of brought these items that normally we wouldn't take on a day-to-day -day basis unless it had that deep-rooted yeah. story. So a lot of our um, items do have those fun stories. Um, we have a case that's full of pipestone. And um, pipestone is quarried locally here um, on the border of North Dakota, or excuse me, Minnesota. They have a lot of deposits and a lot of the tribes would carve that into different things for ceremonial pieces or even just for day-to-day -day items. So um, we have some a whole case here of some pipes that were carved. Um, some of them are cultural items from the local area and some again all over around the world. Um, in this shelf here we do have a lot of items that have showcase some of the beadwork. Um, so nice little pouches. We also have a really good collection of quill work. And quill work, this pouch right here, these little individual slits that you see here, those are actually pieces of quill. And they would flatten the quill, usually putting it in their teeth and um, getting it moist and 
sliding it through, and then they dye it different colors. And so a lot of these pieces that we have, this quill work is done by talented um, people and tribes that are not only regional, but outside the state too. So It's beautiful. <laughs> There are so many like amazing pieces in here. What's maybe some of your favorite things in this room? Um, one of them is actually the kayak that is right next to me. And the kayak was collected by Richard F. Pettigrew when he was in Alaska. It's a walrus skin kayak and it had been housed in the Pettigrew Museum up until um, about six months ago. We took it off of exhibit and brought it here to start looking at conservation. So not only do we collect items to bring to the public to showcase at exhibits, yeah. but conservation and preservation is our key as well. So we wanna make sure that the leather isn't shrinking and cracking the ribs of the interior. We wanna make sure that the leather isn't molding anywhere or have any damage that is gonna to continue to spread and, and hurt this artifact. So we'll have a trained professional come and assess it and then we'll take the next steps on making sure that it's cleaned and properly ready to go back on exhibit. But again, taking a look at some of these items that are very significant to the collection um, is one of our first priorities and is one way that we can keep things looking great another 150 years. I love that. So then more people can enjoy exactly. the artifacts and see them for years to come. Exactly. That is so cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for showing us all these amazing things. Like, I kind of want to go explore uh, the 3D <laughs> artifact room again. That was awesome. Yep. <laughs> so this has been great. Thank you. Yes. I have had an amazing time today. Uh, the Irene Hall Museum and Resource Center just has so much stuff here. It was so cool exploring the different collections, that 3D artifact room. Like, I have to come back. Absolutely. I think one of those behind the scenes public tours would be incredible. Sign me up. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye.